you can do anything. We made this movie for no money. So I was like, oh, you could do anything. You could have these guys kill uh, one of these characters and just start peeing on their dead face. Like I could do that. Like there was no one telling me what I could and couldn't do. I could do whatever. Mind telling me what y'all are doing out here? It's not what these undocumented immigrants are doing. It's why. That is to get rid of all dead bodies. Now five. I don't I don't know if you remember, but uh you uh spoke to me. I was there in Mammoth with you guys uh yes. last year. Yes. Yeah, how are you, man? Good to see you again. <laughs> Doing well. So Great. it's funny, a year later, here we, we come across again. Speaking you, know, you, of never, you never know. Like, I have, we have a movie that we did with uh, Dennis Quaid and Wyatt Russell that we made before Bad Numbers. It still hasn't come out yet. So you never know, man. Uh, these films can sometimes take years. Uh, you, you just never know. There's the, the corporate mechanisms and gears have to turn and they and yeah. you can't trip out over it. It just is what it is. No, I remember seeing the film in Mammoth and, and you know, Thomas was there, you and, uh, you know, the guys were there, and Paul and, and the crew. So it was it was fun. It was fun watching it over again, kind of reminiscing, you know, oh, good yeah. time. Oh, that's cool. So you've already seen it twice. My God. Yeah, I seen it twice. I saw it a year ago before really anyone else saw it. But uh, it was cool yeah. rewatching it now, too, kind of, uh, you know, seeing it the second time and, you um, you know, it kind of looking back at, at certain things was uh, was awesome too. Uh, you know, how how do you kind of? I mean, you're just such a fun experience. I, I you know, when I'm watching this film, I'm like, I'm seeing all these fun characters, like Nick Cassavetes as the the vet. You know, I mean, we're we're seeing Thomas Jane as this like, uh, you know, this this dude that it's kind of mysterious. You don't know. I mean, these guys had so much fun, John. I mean, watching it on screen now and, and again, seeing it again, I'm like. Man, this was a blast for each character. Did did they all? I mean, did you all have them in mind for these specific roles? Because it just feels like everyone played into their characters so well and just had fun with them too. It, it definitely, you can feel the fun for sure. Yeah. You can watch it, you can feel it was a really um, there was some incredible camaraderie on the set. Everyone got along well. Uh, we all vibed everyone we would all have big breakfast the morning after we would shoot all night everyone got along there was a certain magic I, I don't know what to say like where everyone just we were all kind of firing on all cylinders where it just was working very very well um the 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 way it played out was I don't know we t spoke about this before was Thomas Jane came in and the character was originally Hispanic we rewrote the role for him which mm -hmm. was not a guy who was originally a pilot for the cartels, but he was uh, sort of a cartel member who had just sort of wanted to lay low uh, across the border in El Paso. So we rewrote it for him. And again, like every direction we went in, it just, the film just was like kind of revealing itself to us. It was like, it was like almost like a life of its own, you know? And another actor was going to play the Nick Cassavetes character, the uh, Dr. Dean Growler. Um, the Growler, Growlick. He, he's actually named after my real uh, vet who used to rent my mom's house. That's awesome. <laughs> Dr. Dean Growlick, he, he told me, he's like, yeah, you can use my name. I said, okay, sure. Um, so so Growler was going to be played by someone else. And they I'd always wanted Nick to play the role. And Growler, uh, the actor, dropped out. Um, I think it was a week or two before shooting. Wow. And two, maybe two weeks. And Nick came in at the last minute to, to kind of fill it up. I'd always wanted him, but we weren't going to get him for whatever reason. Then he came back and, and stepped into it. Um, we knew Paul was going to play, uh, you know, uncle Steve, uh, Luke who had worked with on crypto was going to play Donnie. Uh -huh. Um, Tyrese was the first person we brought in to play this, the character. We just called him the man with no name. Um, mm -hmm. and he, he was the first involved. Uh, then I brought, then I had to open casting for the two leads. So I was able to find Diego, who again was sort of a late replacement. I was talking to Julio Macias originally on the On My Block show that he does with Diego. And because uh -huh. we were watching that show for Julio, we found Diego. And wow, I didn't Julio, know that. Yeah, when Julio had a conflict, unfortunately, because I'm, I'm still you know buddies with Julio and we talk. And 
text. I want to find something to work on with him. He's a great actor. We were, it was unfortunate because the schedule didn't work. And I think, um, I think one of his, his children got sick, something like that was had, had COVID or something. It was anyway, unfortunately he had to not be able to do it. And uh, we had now been very familiar with Diego Tinoco from watching all those shows. So it was very easy for us to say, well, what about Diego? He wasn't, you know, the guy we originally were thinking, but he was perfect for it in his own way. Um, yeah. Because he has a vulnerability that he was able to play. He's a very good actor. Oh, he's totally. A, great cool find, by the way. And he was, yeah, so he had this great vulnerability, but he also is tough enough looking to where it looks like he can achieve that arc. So at the end of the movie with his, with his hood up and blood on his hands and blood on his face, mm -hmm. you know how it got there. You can believe that he was able to get to that that moment um, to sort of achieve his American dream. Like the current state of the American dream was that he had to do something very incredibly violent in order to get what he what he ends up getting. And so um, it, it just works very well with him as, as the central character who everybody's floating around. And then, uh, yeah, everybody else was, um, it just was this organic process, man. Um, Luke and Tyrese and, and Thomas Jane coming in and, and it all kind of weirdly worked. And Hemke Madera, who was from Queen of the South, uh -huh. was perfect. Right? He was. Like just perfect. I mean, the guy, great guy, friend of mine, but he just absolutely, he nailed it. And he didn't nail it by accident. He, he knew what it was. He had his act, worked on it with his acting coach for weeks. And he like, he just worked it and we rehearsed it and got it down and took it seriously. And yeah, and just quiet it. intimidator. That's what he comes off as, you know, like he, he's someone right. you don't want to mess with, but you don't know about like he's classic. Don't judge a book by its cover. That character, you know, right. Right. Because you sort of start him out as sort of almost a little like silly and kind of an asshole. Yeah. And then he, he sort of slowly revealed as this tragic character um, who's also very dangerous and, uh yeah and he just did such a good job with it he brought a lot of soul to that role my god especially the way that his character kind of culminates in the story it's really like emotionally anchors this this film that that um and i just feel like the ending wouldn't be as powerful and and satisfying and shocking as it is without Emke's mm -hmm. great, great performance you know it was. I, I was wondering that too. You kind of took it. Did you have other endings in mind, or was that kind of the the arc and, and the way you wanted to always kind of move no. it to, uh, or was there multiple kind of variations sometimes that you thought that you could have gone with? There was like fifteen different endings that we. Oh had. wow! We, we originally we started with this, where they get the money. Do they take the money? Do they take the money? Do they give the money back? Do they leave the money? Does the wind blow the money away? Like what happens with the? Uh huh. Does he take it. What does that say about him? Does he reject it because that's the that was the thing that caused all the problems for them. Like, you know, what, how do we handle this? And, and I finally just said like this, the way that it ends now, I was like, no, this happens. And uh -huh. I actually got into a debate with my friends, the guys who we wrote the, wrote the script with Nick and Rex, where they were like, no, we don't think that should happen. And I was like, Interesting. I trust me, this should happen. And I, and I like kind of just shoehorn this ending in. And afterwards they were like, it's, it works. Works so well. It works. It does work because it's yeah. like you said, shocking to satisfactory in a way too. Obviously, and and but yeah, there's there's multiple elements to this ending. It's not just one clear cut thing. Yeah. There's multiple kind of uh, you know branches that come off of you know the decisions that are being made and that were yeah. made and what that transpired too. So absolutely, I, I was walking around while we were shooting the ending scene. Uh, the sequence is all leading up to the ending. And uh -huh. I remember thinking to myself, while people were at lunch, I would just walk around the set um, location. And I was walking around and I said, you can do anything. We made this movie for no money. So I was like, oh, you could do anything. You could have these guys kill uh, one of these characters and just start peeing on their dead face. Like, I could do that. Like, there was no one telling me what I could and couldn't do. I could do whatever. And that's what you get when you make a movie for no money. You get all the, you get all the creative decisions, you know? Yeah. It's the opposite of doing a movie with a lot of money. It's difficult on that end, but the freedom that comes with anything you want to do, this is make believe. It's a movie. You can do whatever you want. And so I kept reminding myself, you can do whatever you want with the end. And then I kept thinking, okay, well, what do I, whatever do I, what do I want? Like, how do I want the story to end? What's the, I don't have to follow any prescribed 
movie ending rules. Um, yeah. You know, uh, everything's up for grabs. And that freed me up to come up with that, with that ending. And I'm glad that I did. I just, it's a great reminder. Just like, these are, this is make believe. Uh -huh. This is storytelling. You can end, you don't have to end it the way you think you should. You can end it the way that it wants to end. And you have to kind of continue to be open to changing that and, and following that. And it was yeah. just an incredible reminder. Yeah. And you know what? You, you, you could like different endings would have also probably been justified and made sense. You opened it enough, you know, where you gave yourself the opportunity to, to take it in different directions too, you know? So that, that's also plays into this creative sort of, uh, freedom where you can do multiple things and, you know, not have to abide by certain strict rules, which gives you so much more to play with. And I felt like these characters were playing with their roles to an extent too. Uh, right. these actors, you know, with, with these characters and it was just fun. Ultimately, uh, what came out on screen, you know, I just thought you had the right mix of people, the right actors at the right parts, uh, you know, Diego yeah. makes sense. Like I almost don't see another person playing that role at this point, you know? So no, uh, no, he also, yeah, I was gonna say once the movie kind of ha starts to come together, it's like a train that's just going and yeah, maybe a piece falls off and like a new piece, you got to like, you're like laying track in front of you as the train tracks, uh, the train's going down the tracks and like, you can't stop. And so an actor falls out, somebody gets it and someone just hands you a new piece of track and you're like, yeah, it looks pretty good. And you throw it in there. And like, if you get lucky with enough hard work and preparation and having had like watched all his tape and done all this stuff, uh, uh, some magic can happen. And I do feel with this movie, something magical happened. And when we got in the edit, and we started cutting it. I remember looking over at our, our great editor, Bella, Bella Erickson. And I said, is it just me? Because I've seen movies that where I, I look at the, the first original cuts early in the editing process. And I just want to like kill myself. I'm like, this is horrible. You know? Um, and in this process, I looked over at her and I said, is it just me? Or is this like, just, does this work? It just works. And she's like, no, it just works. It's just yeah. one of those movies. It just works. And so yeah, that's a unique blend of actors and, and characters really just like forms this <laughs> cool soup of things, you know, with all these so ingredients true. in it. So true. Uh, and, and sometimes the stew just happens to, you throw all the stuff in and everything. And they just go, how did you make that? And you kind of almost don't know how you made it. Yeah. You know, it's like, you got a little lucky. Things came together. And, you know, it's like, you as a director, I'm really, I, I, it's on my list to see Muzzle because there's so many of, of these actors from Bad Hombres in Muzzle yeah. and, and yeah. I enjoy your work. So I'm looking forward to it's out now with, with Aaron Eckhart and a lot yeah. of these actors from this film too. Um, you know, do you, as a director, I feel like there's something about working with people you know that are, you know, that you're not, you can trust on camera, but on set that's so important i remember just seeing the vibe between you paul and thomas and all the other actors and kyle smiths and everyone who was there at mammoth you know um it's just there's something about working right with with people that you've you can trust and work with and it seems like you're following that path with with other projects that you're working on a hundred percent for example hemke madera who is the god killer in this movie mm -hmm. um we needed him to come into muzzle and do this this quite a long monologue and this sequence this very dramatic sequence that brings us into the third act of muzzle which you'll see and mm -hmm. terrific in this but because i knew him so well we were shooting in uh, louisville kentucky he lived in he was he's got another house in nashville which is like a two-hour drive i needed an actor and i said hemke i need you to come in and do this he's like i'll be there i'll be there monday i'll drive up and he drove up and when we were going to shoot that scene I got COVID. And so I was like, I had to be like away from the set during, during their scene. And so they had my face on an iPad and he always calls, <laughs> me, he calls me puto bitch. Like he calls everybody. He's always like, he goes, Hey, puto bitch. And I'm like, so we called the pad. I said, you just call it the puto pad. And he called it the puto pad. And like, it was my face. I wouldn't have been able to do this jokingly if I didn't know him. If I was like, yeah. Hello, nice to meet you on an iPad. Like, that's not going to work because we had done a whole movie together just a few months before I was like, Hemke, smoke the cigarette as if it's your last cigarette, you know, play the scene as if it's a confessional, not between you and Aaron Eckhart, but between you and God. 
It, mm-hmm. And it's got it's similar to what he was kind of doing in the end of Bad Hombres. And I'm like, it's like the scenes in Bad Hombres at the end, but you're he's sitting on his log. He's a plays a guy who's like cutting down trees. Anyway, you should go check it out. But Diego plays a character called Hernandez, one of the cops. Um, Paul Johansson is plays one of the internal affairs guys. I love it. And uh, Paul's been in three movies. Luke's been in two movies. We were about to do a movie, Winter Kills, that fell apart. Paul was going to play one of the main cops opposite Kiefer Sutherland. Um, oh, nice. We just, the strike blew it up. It just mm-hmm. nuked. Um, but I do like it because I'm working on a Western now and I'm thinking about Paul for a role. Uh, I think he'd be great. And I know him so well. He's like a brother almost. I could say to him, like, you know, we can argue about stuff. Sure. We don't get offended. It's, it's like a family. Um, it's great. Because it's so you, important. You cannot be shy about this stuff. You have to say, this is what's going on. This is what the actors, the, the character's doing. This is what this is the way I see it. He is the as the actor says, well, wait a minute. I hear the gun click, John. Then uh I'm just gonna turn around and shoot him. If he cocks his gun, I'm shooting. You know, it's it's, it's like we can have these conversations. And I said, well, Paul, if you don't cock your gun now, I'm just going to put this out in, in later in post. You know, so you, you just cock your gun, you know, and we can have these arguments. Um, it's very healthy. It's the way that movies turn out, I think, good when you can be yourself and not be pussyfooting around or walking on eggshells with actors. You have to roll your sleeves up and get in there and 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 get into the guts of the whole thing, you know? you've managed to do that you know uh it's it's so like i said it makes your job easier working with people you can trust and know and and it seems like and and these are all awesome actors so what a treat you know to have them and uh, multiple movies i'm i'm ex- i'm gonna be checking out muzzle next few days for yeah, sure please, uh, let me know yeah <laughs> i will it's so cool with connecting with you john again i yeah. remember this has been even for me i was waiting till it kind of comes out to the world you know uh seeing what you guys have worked on and, and the awesome stuff that that's out of it. anyone who likes thrillers, this is a hell of a thriller. Uh, it will keep you on your toes throughout, you know, with a lot of uh, interesting and memorable characters in between. So I'm, I'm happy people get to now get to watch it and it's finally in the world. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching it twice and checking out muzzle and for taking the time and just being uh, such a cool dude. It's great to see you again. Oh, yeah. Good to see you again. And uh, like I said, I had a blast chatting with you a year ago and with the guys. And uh, it's really cool to reconnect again. So hopefully I get to talk to you on the next one. Next one. Let's see each other.